Get ready, my soul. I dive again. Get ready, my soul. I dive again to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done. Everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or won, everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to the present moment here, to a new beginning here, and I'm seeing life so clearly now. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, where conscious spiritual living abides. We're radically inclusive spiritual renegades who are healing hearts and creating community. In this community, we encourage people to live in enthusiastic expectancy of all of their good, their abundance, their beauty, their love, their creativity, their calmness, their freedom. Let's begin with prayer. Ah, so we take a deep nourishing breath and we just settle into that divine God that is right where we are. The love, the joy, the peace, the ease, the grace of God right where we are. And we connect with that divinity, with that peace and that joy and that ease, knowing that it lives right within us. And what I know to be the truth today is that there is a message about love, about being love, about being loved, and about loving. And I know that each of us knows that we are loved. Somewhere deep down within us, we know that we are loved. <sighs> I know that every person that's watching, either right now or later in the week, is feeling the love that this message has, whether it be through the music or the message or the reading. I know that we have been drawn here today by divine appointment to listen to this message and to hear how we can learn to bless and accept all the things that are in our lives. So I am so grateful. I am grateful to know that the loving God that I know lives right within me. I'm grateful to know that that God lives in each person on this planet. And from all of that gratitude, I just release this into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because what I know to be the truth is that God already has said yes to this. God has already called it good, already seen the seeds of love that we've planted and said, wow. So I can just let it be, I can say amen and together we can affirm it, and so it is. So we move now into a song, an opening song, and this song is really to let you know that you are beautiful. And if anybody says anything different, you shouldn't listen to them. Beautiful. 
service when we do celebrations and healing we celebrate things in our lives that were uh, joyous in this past week and we pray for people who desire prayer we begin with our celebrations we're grateful and joyful this week to be celebrating that we are still operating in full strength that although we are separated from each other, we can be together through Facebook Live and other means, through our midweek meditations in Zoom. So I am knowing that that part of my life and that part of your life is moving forward, that this opportunity to be in community, be it different, is great. We celebrate people that are having birthdays this week and people that are having anniversaries. I know that Ellen Thrash has a birthday coming up, so we're celebrating her today. And I pause now for you to list any of the celebrations that you want to add to this time of being joyous. Hmm. So we're also a community that's steeped in healing. And we take time now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we were just expressing. We take time to remember that God is all there is. That love, that peace, and that ease, and that freedom is all that God is. And as individual expressions of the divine, all that God is lives within us. And we know all those qualities of spirit, though sometimes we may step away from them and live in the pain and suffering of life. So what I know to be the truth is that God is right where we are. Each one of us, we have God moving in through and as us in every moment of every day. And there are people on this planet right now who are not feeling their own divinity who are not feeling that connection with the divine that brings joy and love and peace. So we pause now to pray for them, to create a circle of love in which we place each person that anybody in this community is talking about or wanting to bring prayer and healing to. And we begin with just envisioning that circle and saying aloud all of the names of anyone that you feel needs prayer. So what I know to be the truth is that during this time where we place these people in the circle of love, that anything that needed to be revealed was revealed to them. Anything that needed to be released was released and the things with inside of them that need to be lifted up were lifted up. So we pause right now and I invite you to just open your heart and send love to every person in our circle. Allow yourself to just know that there is so much love in your heart that is expanding out into the world to every person that needs healing. So I know that whatever these people are seeking, it is seeking them out right here and right now. I know that they felt this love, and if only for a few moments, 
they were shifted into a feeling of being cared for, being loved. So I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that I know that the God without is the God within me and within each person on this planet and within each person that we place in this circle of love. I'm grateful the, for the power of community prayer and for the power that this community has to send out love and make a difference for these people needing healing. So it's from all that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth. God's already called it good. So I just say amen, and together we affirm it, and so it is. take a deep nourishing breath and as you breathe each breath go inside yourself and ask your heart who am I in the movie Narnia the lion Ashlan says to Lucy just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there you just heard the words, Spirit am I. Just because you might not see Spirit sometimes, doesn't mean Spirit's not there right where you are. So during this meditation, embrace that your Spirit, free of all limits, safe, healed, whole. Imagine your life with no limits. Feel the power behind stepping fully into your own greatness. In the silence, let go of any false humility. Realize that because you have difficulty seeing your greatness, doesn't mean it's not there. So visualize it. Bring that vision into your heart. Feel that it's already done. Notice all the wonderful ramifications of you stepping fully into who you are. Spirit, free of all limits, safe, healed, and whole. Spirit am I.
So as we return from the silence, bring back that vision of the greatest you that you can imagine. Anchor it in your heart so you can tap into it in the future. Recognize that you can love yourself today just the way you are. And you can be the greatest you that you can imagine. Release any hesitations. Embrace that you are spirit, free of limits, safe, healed, and hold. from Find and Use Your Inner Power by Emmett Fox. All things be ready if our minds be so. This is one of the greatest statements of spiritual law ever made. Even in the pages of the Bible itself, there is no clearer or more definite guidance in the art of living. Shakespeare here gives us a complete statement of metaphysical truth. Every student of this science should write it in letters of fire upon their hearts. It is the door of freedom and the Jacob's ladder from earth to heaven. There is nothing in the universe that you cannot do or be if you are mentally ready. People speak of golden opportunities, but what we call opportunity is really one's own mental readiness. Napoleon said, opportunities, I make opportunities. And while this world be merely a vainglorious boast for one who is not on the spiritual basis, yet when you do understand the truth of being, it is simply a statement of fact. The Romans could have had the telephone. The Greeks could have had the cinema. The Babylonians could have had the automobile had they been mentally ready. The laws of nature were the same in those ages as in ours. The same materials were in the ground, but the minds of the ancients were not ready for those things, and so they had to go without them. We say in metaphysics that demand and supply are one, and it is equally true that supply and demand are one also. Supply, the necessary mental condition, and the demand the opportunity or the occasion will present itself automatically. Whenever you are ready, you will find that everything else is ready too. my 
myself the way I am. There's nothing I need to change. I'll always be the perfect me. There's nothing to rearrange. I'm beautiful and capable of being the best me I can. And I love myself just the way I am. Myself the way I am. Science of Mind teaches us that all things in the world are actually created by the beliefs that we hold in our unconscious minds. So by changing what we believe, however we do that, even if we do it through hypnosis or through prayer, we can experience changing the things or the conditions in our world. And as I mentioned last week, now is the time for us to see that each person is merely wanting to be loved in the world. They want to know that they can be loved and that they're worthy of that love. So how we react to life and how we create an atmosphere of acceptance and non-judgment and unity is something that we collectively need to learn how to do. So this week I'm talking about just as I am. And your question for the week is this. What's the one choice you might make today to easily and willingly know that there is something in you greater than any condition and that something can dissolve it as you bless and accept each person in each event as is? I'm going to state that one more time. What's the one choice that you can make today to easily and willingly know there is something in you greater than any condition and that something can dissolve it as you bless and accept each person and each event just as it is. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to start by looking at being love. And can we talk to God? Ernest Holmes says this, if we make ourselves receptive, to the idea of love, we become lovable. To the degree that we embody love, we are love. That's why people who love are loved. It is not, it does not pay to hate. Hate's a human idea. Love is a divine verity. Wouldn't it be great if all of us encountered others and we encountered them with love. What if we all chose 
with every encounter to be as loving as we could, realizing that if their attitude doesn't feel like love, they're calling for us to love them. They're calling for us to send them a message that they are lovable. Can you imagine if we did that, how we could live in a love infested world? In this divisive world that we seem to have been living in the past few weeks, it's time for us to remember those words from the Bible that Matthew said, respect your father and your mother and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I chose the song just the way I am for today because the message it has offers a powerful message on loving and how we can learn to live in this love infested world. So I want to start with that first verse. I love myself the way I am. There's nothing I need to change. I'll always be the perfect me. There's nothing to rearrange. The message is about standing in the knowing of who you are right now. Because whoever we are right now with all of our warts, with all of our shadow sides, we can love that person, shadow side and all. This message is not about limiting you, and it's not saying that there are not ways that you can grow. You can always continue to expand your wisdom. You can always continue to expand your spiritual practices and learn more of that divinity that lives within you. The last verse reminds us of that. I love myself the way I am and I still want to grow. But change outside can only come when deep inside I know that I'm beautiful and capable of being the best I can. So change comes when we know we're lovable. We have to be love before we can do anything else. We have to start to change from the inside out from just knowing that we are lovable just the way we are right now. We don't have to be somebody else. We don't have to, to please other people in order to be loved just the way we are. We're lovable. So I invite you to notice what came up for you in the meditation today. How you listen to that divine within you. How you listen is how you love yourself. What prevents you from listening to that heaven within you and from remembering who you are? That you are the hands and the eyes and the ears and the heart of the divine. All of that is about truly loving yourself. What presents itself to you when you listen? In what presence do you receive? As I was writing this talk, I noticed that presents and presence are actually the same word pronounced differently. So what if you took the time to just slow down and notice the presence that you receive when you listen to what heaven within you is presenting to you? There's a beautiful uh, quote from the 365 Science of Mind, and it says this, God speaks when we listen. God speaks when we listen. God is there when we open the door. And when we listen, there is a response from something greater than ourselves that is the infinite person, the limitless possibility. God speaks wherever and whenever we listen to our inner voice. So are you willing to listen so that you can hear God speaking to you, so you can hear what God is presenting to you about what's yours to do in this particular day and age in our world? Are you willing to listen to hear the presence that God is willing for you to have if you just say yes to them? So we wanna be loving, and Jesus told us that loving really boils down to this short phrase, love thy neighbor, as thyself. There's a twofold message there, and it starts with loving thyself. Because you have to know how to love yourself. You have to know how to listen to that divine wisdom within you to know how to love someone else. And once we know how to love ourselves, then we come to the second part, love thy neighbor that same way. 
What do you think it takes to love your neighbor as yourself? after you've mastered that loving yourself part, which I'm saying is no easy task for some of us. In many cases, our human nature seeks the answers from the outside world. So let's go back to our song for just a second, because the second verse says, I love you just the way you are. There's nothing you need to do. When I feel love inside myself, it's easy to love you. Behind your fears, your rage and tears, I see your shining star, and I love you just the way you are. It's such a beautiful message. Every verse of this song has a beautiful message. We're reminded that when we feel inside the love, that's the love of the divine in, through, and as us, it's easy to love others. Being love allows us to see beyond the fear it allows us to see beyond the rage of other people, behind their tears about all of the hurt that they've encountered in their lives, and to see the shining star that each one of them is. And it takes us to be aware of the love within us to see that. Can you imagine the love-infested world we would have if we look behind people's rage, behind their fears, behind all of the hurt that they've experienced, including our own, and we loved just the way everyone is. How do we do that? The first step is to listen, to listen to what presents itself from within, to listen not just when things are calm and peaceful, but all the time, no matter what is happening in the outside world to be observant. Rather than trying to throw water on a grease fire, which we know just makes it worse, we just wait patiently. We listen first, and then we take action. Mark Anthony uh, Lord is one of my mentors, and I heard him say this week that we don't come here without everything we need. None of us took this mission on this planet without a guidance system and enough fuel to get where we need to go. I believe that we just haven't learned how to use our GPS. We have a God present sense system within us that is right action in every situation. We just don't always know how to use it. And that God present system is never off course. It's always right where we are. Remember the opening song today was the, I'm sorry, the meditation song today was Spirit Am I. If you believe in that one life, that we're all part of this big one life, what does that mean to you? It means that we're connected to everybody, not just to some people, not just to the people that we want to be connected with. It means that we are one in all situations. In Living Without Fear, our marvelous founding father, Ernest Holmes, told us this. We must take into the science of mind, into everyday life. And when we find ourselves confronted by discordant conditions, we should never say, Oh, what's the use? What's the use? But rather say, there's something in me which is greater than this condition and it can dissolve it. We have the privilege and the power to do this. And if we use this ability properly, it will be productive of salutary results at the center of each of us. To it, we may come for guidance and from it, we may draw both inspiration and the power to live, stand, walk, and sit. Ah, when I read that again, every time I read that, I just feel like it's such a powerful message. And I venture to say that many of us have found ourselves confronted in the last few weeks by discordant conditions. The question is, have we gone to our guidance system and drawn the inspiration and power from it, or have we turned our backs on it? Have we fretted about it, which really doesn't do any good? Worry doesn't really help us in any, at any level. 
What have we done when we were confronted with those discordant conditions? How did we love our neighbor just as they are, no matter what's happening? So there's times, I know, when we're confronted with a person or a group, it might be a political entity or a political figure, and we, we kind of feel like they may have shown up on the planet just to challenge our ability to love, our challenge our, our ability to be loving. So let's go back to the song one more time and look at the, word, the verse about the world. I love the world the way it is because I can clearly see that all the things I judge are done by people just like me. Wow. I'll get to the rest of that verse in a minute, but all the things I judge are done by people just like me. I believe we are being called to know that our hearts are connected no matter what. When we come from being love and a desire to be loving, what presents itself is that present of recognizing that our hearts are connected of realizing that what I just is being done by another spirit, another God expression, a neighbor whom I love, is just being done by somebody that's just like me on this planet. In the healing part of our service, we send out love from our hearts. And I can feel the love that's being sent out during that time in the service because we're in this place of recognizing that there are celebrations for us and some people aren't celebrating and realizing that there are people on the planet that are hurting and that need our love. And my whole heart expands as I feel everybody in this community just sending out love to other people. So what's happening on the planet is we're being called to love the world just the way it is. And that doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean that we don't want to see changes occurring in the world. It just means that we have to muster up love in every situation so that we can bring about a planet that becomes healed. In our world, we have this systemic problem. And systemic problems can only really be solved by a collective consciousness that says, we're going to love the world just the way it is. We're gonna send out love because what I know is I get notes from people that say, ah, my friend put me in your healing circle and it made such a difference in my life. What if we did that to the world? What if we sent out love to the world? What if we brought about healing on the planet and in our country by realizing every day we have to love the world the way it is right now with all of its shadow sides and all of the things that are wrong with it because that's the way that we create real change. The song goes on to say, so till the birth of peace on earth that only love can bring, I'll help it grow by loving everything. So we help the world grow by loving everything, every situation, whatever it happens. We don't have to like it, but we can love it. And I realize that's a lot easier said than done. When so much hurt is presenting itself to us in so many different ways of violence and injustice and unrest, I admit that I feel incompetent to talk about any precise changes that we should be making in our government or our local systems that are needed to help this country make a statement so that racism does become a thing of the past. So it does become something we just hear about in the history books. What I can talk about is what I know. We help things grow by loving and each of us is love. Each of us desires to be loved and to be loving. That's our innate nature. We are spirit expressing, and spirit is just pure love. So I want you to just close your eyes for a minute and ponder a few questions. Where are you allowing yourself not to love yourself fully? Where are you saying to yourself or another person, 
something unkind, judgmental, or unaccepting. Where are you allowing yourself to feel separate rather than discovering the creative expression that you are and feeling the indwelling presence? Where are you truly not loving your neighbor the way you love yourself? Where are you thinking in a way that would heal our judgments and get rid of hurt? And where in your life do you remember oneness and unity rather than divisiveness? Imagine life on a planet where each person took those words I just read of Ernest Holmes. There is something in me which is greater than this condition and it can dissolve it. There is something in me greater than this condition, greater than any condition that we see, but particularly greater than this condition of separateness and divisiveness. And that thing in me can dissolve it. I just need to go to my guidance system and allow it to tell me what is my place, what is mine to do. When I did that this past week, I was reminded of a really simple two-step practice which is, can be applied no matter what the current conditions are. The practice is called accept and bless. And here's how it works. You just allow yourself to notice your judgment or any disease that you're having. It might be towards a person, it might be towards a group, it could be towards a relative, an acquaintance, a political entity. It could even be towards yourself. And some of us do have those things that we're unaccepting and judging of ourselves. And then what we do is we accept and we bless the person or group with all of their shadow side and all of their warts. So here's the process. You think of the person. Bring somebody to mind right now that maybe you've judged in the last week. And then you take a deep breath in and you say this aloud. I bless you. And then you take another deep breath in and you say aloud, I accept you. And mean accept that you're accepting who they are right here, right now. You're loving them just the way they are. With all their fears, all their rage, whatever it might be. And you just continue that process until you start to feel a little bit less aggravated or a little, a little less judgment. Sometimes the accept comes easier than others. I know that for myself. There are people that I have done this process with probably for over a year because sometimes when the hurt is really deep, it takes a while for us to be uh, wise enough to be able to get rid of it. But eventually, we recognize the blessing and accepting is as much for ourselves as for the other person. It's a release for us of the things within us that are not serving us on a daily basis. So I'm gonna end with a rather lengthy quote from Creative Mind that's also from Ernest Holmes because I think it has a good summary of what we were talking about today. There through the door of our own thought, we enter into the universal consciousness, into a complete realization of life and truth, of love and beauty. And as we sit in the silence of our own souls and listen, it will be the greatest thing we will ever do. In that completeness, we are lost and yet we are found. This is what is meant that a man must lose his life in order to find it. We are lost in the human and found in the divine. Ah, so let's pray. Let us just connect with that spirit, that spirit that is ultimate love, unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. And know that we are connected, that that which is spirit is also that which we are. 
And what I know today is that we are awakening to that power of good in the universe that we can tap into whenever we see something that we may begin to judge or whenever we see something that creates divisiveness in our world. Today I'm living in the promise of peace, the peace that spirit brings. The peace that spirit brings to me and into the lives of everyone that's going through this unrest this moment. Today I'm listening to my inner voice and I know that each person that's watching is also listening to theirs, hearing exactly what is meant for each of us to do, what's mine to do. And in that wonderful scope of all the things that are ours to do, we embrace that freedom from strife. We move into our souls and into our hearts and know that love is available to every person on this planet. Love is available from us to every person on our planet. And that as we love our neighbors as ourselves, it requires us to begin with the love of ourself. So I know that we are each love, we are each loved, and we are each loving. And I'm grateful to know that. I'm grateful to know that the God that God is, the love that God is, the joy that God is, is who I am. I am grateful to know that there is forgiveness that is a bounding within me for anything that feels like it needs to be forgiven for me to move forward in this loving world. <sighs> so it's from that gratitude of knowing that love is the thing that really can change this world, that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth, that God has already called it good that in that infinite time of the divine, this is already a loving planet, a planet filled with unity and oneness, a planet where the connective consciousness is about love and being loved and nothing else. So I just let it be. I say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. <sighs> I'm so grateful that you tuned in today. And this is our time for an offertory blessing. And our music team has a wonderful song that they sing that allows us to just get into that mode of blessing. So as you're sending your blessing to us and to yourself and to your friends, just enjoy the music. This information is out at the CSL SoutheastLA.org website. You can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 225-320-5100. Or you can mail a check to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations.
you to remember Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth but we here at CSL Southeast Louisiana are definitely the most joyful so until we meet again may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness may you listen to that inner voice that tells you how to love how to be love and be loving and how to accept love as well and may we know that love is what changes the world I invite you to watch us on YouTube. If you go out to YouTube and put in CSL space S-E-L-A, you can subscribe to our tube and then all the new uptakes will be uh, sent to you so that you'll know we're live with other and new exciting things. So until we meet again, may you be indeed feeling the aliveness of life. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive.